Hi everyone. Sorry, I didn't realise anyone was there. I was waiting for you all to catch me up. Um, good afternoon. It's uh, the middle, well, towards the end of July and we've got the lights on here. Um, it's dreary. That's all I can say. On Thursday, Wednesday, whatever day it was, the, it was so hot we didn't know what to do with ourselves. And uh, now it's just awful. <laughs> Dorothy says hi. Hiya, Dorothy. Well, today I thought we would look back at something that we did when we first started this, um, the Miss Paints a Lot Acrylic group, and we did a series of four flowers, the lily, daisy, hibiscus, and this fuchsia. And it's, it actually proved quite popular, and I think it's because it's something that we, well, we know for a start, we're familiar with it. Hiya, Susan. Um, and... It looks it looks quite easy. It looks like it's something we can do. So we did it in acrylics, um, and a lot of you posted what you'd done, and you know you that was great. But now I'm thinking that we'll do it in in pastels, just just to see uh, if it's as easy, easier how it comes out basically. So this is the original image, and I just this is printed out obviously. I just like to draw your attention to the image in the bottom left hand corner which is the image on the computer. Now I asked this to print out in best quality on a laser printer, but look how few details I have compared to the image that's there. Um, you see there's much more shading and it, it's just a, a much nicer image altogether, brighter and more vibrant. So if it's at all possible when you're painting, if you're painting something um, that's sort of copying or whatever um try and use either your phone in, in your hand or your ipad if you've got one or you know even a computer macbook or something facing you because it it really does make a huge difference however that's uh that's that this i i did my uh, acrylic fuchsia as a giveaway so i no longer have the actual uh fuchsia in acrylic but this is the uh, printout of what it was so it's a bit duller than the uh, original um, but apart from that it's 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 quite pretty it's okay I quite like it you can see the shading that we've put in and we've put a lot of that in by dry brushing it which is a good um, technique to have when you're using acrylic but this time we're going for pastels now, pastel, don't just set about any piece of paper with pastels because you'll be disappointed. You won't get a very good result. You need paper specifically made for pastel, for putting pastel on. And it's, it's paper that has a, a tooth to it. You might not be able to feel it all the time, but you need it. And the most popular one, I think, um, probably out there, is this pastel mat. It's... It's good, the professionals use it. There are loads of other papers, loads. It's an absolute minefield out there of which pastel papers you should use. But I would recommend that you try pastel mat first before you go on to anything that's got more tooth, like sandpaper, or less tooth, like velour. And you can get everything in between those. Uh, this is a pad of pastel mat. They come in three sizes. This is the middle size. And they come in various sets, and the sets are, are the different colours. This one's got in it uh, white, dark blue, light green, and the dark green. Um, I have other sets that have different colours, and there's two pads uh, that only have one colour in. One of those is white, and the other is, uh, is it black or anthracite? anthracite. Yeah, so they just... Uh, so as you know, these are about, are they 18 pounds ish? 18 pounds and there is 12 sheets in there. So, you know, it's not the cheap, not the cheapest thing to get yourself set up, but then you've got 12 sheets and you know, you can split them up, cut them as you wish. This uh, is the dark green. I thought it would make a suitable background. 
As you go on in puzzles, you'll realise that the colour of your background paper is actually quite important because you can leave bits quite uncovered when you kind of know what you're doing, which, you know, we'll see if I do or not as we go along. The pastels themselves that I'm using, I tend to use um, these, which are unison, uh, soft pastels, and they are very, very soft. Um, they're commonly regarded as the king of pastels. They're very nice, but they do take a bit of getting used to because it's quite a blunt object if you look at it like that, you know. Um, and the other pastels that I'll be using today are Rembrandt. They are a more oily sort of pastel, actually. Still very, very soft. And the softer they are, the more pigment they lay down. But that can become a problem. Because if you lay too much pigment down, too much pastel, you lose the tooth of the paper. And then you can't lay anything else down on top of it. So... The idea is go as light as you can to get pigment down, blend it, see what it looks like, put more in, but go as light as you can to start with. The only reason that I've picked up the uh, Rembrandts today is that they have much, uh, much brighter colours than the Unison. The Unison, I don't know how to tell you, they seem to have dry colours, uh, dusty kind of colours, which suits my everyday painting, you know, what I'm doing in pastels. But sometimes you have to break out and draw flowers. <laughs> and these Rembrandts are great for that. You'll see that all of mine are snapped in half. That's for a purpose. Um, when you're using pastels, you very often use the side and you don't want the full length of pastel because you can't get it in, the piece is too small. So most pastel artists break the pastels. It also gives you two edges, two sharp edges to draw sharp lines with. So it seems really wrong to get a new set of pastels and snap them in half. It, it, it's, it's, you know, you've got to take a deep breath before you do it, but it's, it's necessary if you want to use them properly. So that's the pastels covered, the pastel mat. The other thing I would say is, as always, I have transferred this onto here with Sorrel transfer paper, but this time I did it really, really gently, as gently as I could with still leaving a, a mark. And it was so gentle that I was worried it was going to disappear. So I just took a pastel pencil, which is a different thing again, and just went over the lines that I'd made just so you could see it and I could see it. Pastel pencils. Let's just talk about them for a minute. They are, they look like pencils. Um, they have, you know, wood on the outside and they have some sort of something on the inside. And the sort of something they have is the same as the soft pastels but they're just mixed with a little bit more wax. So they, they, they bind them, they're, they're harder. They're harder than the soft pastels. Um, you have to sharpen them, which I think we covered last week can be a bit of a, how do you do? Some people sharpen them with knives and you get ends that look like this. Like that. I, obviously I have at some stage done that, but this, uh, I use a, a sharpener, a proper sharpener, and you get nice, really sharp ends to your pastel pencils. They are great for detail, but if you have used up all the tooth on your paper with your soft pastels, they won't make a mark. So you really have to beware if you're going to go in and put details in later, not to overburden the tooth on your paper because you won't get any further. There is a way around it, but it's... It's better if you don't do it in the first place, but if you do and you really need details, then you can spray it with what they call a workable fixative. This is one such thing. Um, and it it puts a layer of fixative over it that you can work on top of. So it gives you a bit of tooth back. But it's better if you don't get to that stage. Although, you know, some of us do. I mean, we just do. 
So that's a quick waltz around pastels. Right, let's get started on this um, fuchsia. So you can see the background. We'll do the background first, then we'll come into the flower itself. It's got lovely bright greens, it's got turquoises, and I really kind of want to make that sing. I think with the acrylic one here, we made it quite nice and bright, and I, I prefer that. I like, I like the brighter one than this quite muted one. So let's put some colours in and see where that gets us to. This is a nice turquoise colour. So I haven't broken these ones in half. Uh, these are a different set again, but it doesn't matter. Um, they could do with being broken in half, but I'm not, I'm not in a pastel breaking mood today. <laughs> so just, you know, very gently go over where you want the pigment to be. Don't press down like when you're, when you're colouring in. Just gently kiss the paper. Um, oh yeah, there's a little bit on this side too. And then we want quite a bright citrusy sort of green. This one, perhaps. Once you've put the pastel on your paper, until you actually blend it into the paper, it's very loose and it'll come off on your fingers all the time, which is um, a nuisance. So in between the sheets of pastel mat, you get a, um, a thing called glassine, uh, and it's just a very fine waxy sort of paper. And if you put that over it, it'll save you transferring what's on there to another part of the uh, of the picture. And it'll also save you picking up so much on your hands, um, which, you know, some people just can't bear that feeling. So this is just a sort of nub end of a, of a piece. Um, it's perfect for what we want. It'll go in there, whereas I couldn't get my big full-size pastel in there. So once again, I am just doing this very, very lightly. But you'll see with these pastels, the amount of pigment that comes off them, it's, it's amazing. And I don't know how you'll feel about this, whether you'll feel that it's you're more in control than you would be with acrylics, or less in control. I, f I think I feel more in control actually, that the actual thing is in my hand. Um, it's not on the other end of a brush. I'd be interested to, to hear what you've got to say about that. I know that I've just gone through some very expensive pastels there with you, but I'd like to tell you that, I don't know if you're um, all familiar with AliExpress. It's a, It's just a thing like Amazon, you know, where can you get it? Oh, try AliExpress. And it's you can get an app for your phone or your uh, iPad and you just type in what you're searching for and it will bring up. They ha I mean, they've just got millions of things from babies and nappies to uh, everything, including pastels. And I looked on there the other day for pastels, see if they had pastels, and they did. Um, and then... Once I'd got the name of those, I looked to see if anybody had done any any work with them, any research on them, and they do seem to be um, quite well received. the The name of them is Mungio M U N G Y O, and they are substantially cheaper than any of these ones I'm talking about. I haven't used them, as you know, but. Plenty of people on YouTube seem to have done comparisons and whatever, and they do seem to stand up okay. There seems to be two different kinds, um, Mr. Fixer. Is there? There's the uh, hard ones and soft there's, ones? There's the square ones. Yeah, the little square the ones. Cubes. Yeah, I haven't got those out today. Uh, and then there's ones that look very similar to the... To the unison. To the unison. Yeah. Ones says that they're hand-rolled. Right, like the, the unison, unison ones. yeah. And the others are obviously just compressed the yeah. machine. Yeah. So I mean both of those have a a really good use. It depends maybe the easier ones to get going with are the ones that are the cube ones, I would say. And I don't think they're too expensive really. Um 
just to see if you like it. I know you will once you get going with it. I know you will. So uh, let's crack on with it. So we're not going to get anywhere. But yeah, M-U-N-G-Y-O on AliExpress. Actually, I mean, there are companies in this country that are selling those, aren't there? Uh, yes, and they're, they're ready and available on eBay. Oh, are they? All right. Okay. So forget all that about they're AliExpress. The hand-rolled ones. Right. And they're a bit more difficult to come across, but the right. cube ones are ready and available. Okay. So it might be, you know, a good a good place to start. I mean, also suspect they're probably on Amazon. So once you've got what you think is sufficient pastel down, you just blend it in with your with your fingertip. You can get blending tools if you really hate the idea of this. I personally prefer to do it with my finger because I think it gets it further into the tooth. Um, but blending tools are available. You see the way that just fades into the other colour? It's just lovely. You'd have to work quite hard with acrylics to get that blend in there. Can you move the camera back a bit because it's the autofocus is autofocusing on the top of your head. <laughs> right. <laughs> Better things to focus on. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. So there might be some earthquake-type movements going on. All right, OK. Sorry if you're seasick, guys. Right, so you might see in here that I'm seeing actually this green through it. That's not what I had in mind, so I'm going to put some, some more pigment down, just a little bit, and just blend that in. A little bit lighter over the top, so we get a nice shade. I personally find this very pleasing. I really like doing it. Uh, right, so down here then, uh, we need some bright, 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 bright. How about this? How about this really citrus singy green? And it's going to sit well against that purple. Because it's got a sort of yellow cast to it. And as we know, yellow and purple are complementary colours. So they should do nicely together. So I'm just rubbing that over the top of the turquoise just to give us some shading when we blend it. I think I'm probably going to need another some more pigment on that to blend it properly. When you haven't got enough pigment on you can't blend properly because it's all sitting down in the bottom of the tooth and you can't mix it. And then I'm going to come back to this um, medium sort of green that we've got here. I mean, just make your own background up as you go along. If you'd rather do it blue like the sky, you can do it blue like the sky. It really is up to you. So let's blend that in. See if we're all right and we need any more pigments on there. That's okay, but I'm actually going to add some more turquoise because I like the turquoise. See, I'm just using it flat side down like that. And I think that'll give us a nice finish there. So that's a ni really nice bit of shading there. So moving around onto this bit here. It's actually got some yellow in it, this one, so we'll use some bright yellow right up next to that purple. Let's make it sing. Bring it out a little bit. Um, got a bit of turquoise there, let's add a little bit more. Um, and let's add some of this zingy uh, citrus colour. Have any of you tried pastels before? Please let me know what you've tried, how you found them, what you thought of them. I guess it's like everything, like absolutely everything. You've kind of got to learn, learn about them. And, you know, what we really want to do is pick them up and just be able to 
go straight ahead with them. Um, I don't necessarily think pastels are like that. I think there is a bit of learning to do. Um, but it's nice along the way. So here we're going around these um, the dangly bits <laughs> out the middle of the fuchsia. I'm not sure what you call them. Stamens or something, probably. So I'm just using the edge, the top edge that's now sharp because I've been using it on its side just to go around those. So you see, even although you've got a big sort of blunt thing, you can actually use it um, to draw quite fine lines. I will say that takes a little bit of practice getting to know where the edge of your pastel is. But look at the hundred. So let's put a bit up there. And a little bit more turquoise on the top just to blend it a bit. So let's blend that, see what we've got, see if it looks all right or it doesn't. I do like that yellow there, that's nice. Right, I think I need a little bit more. It's not filling the teeth, the tooth of the paper properly. I can't move this uh, where I want it to move to. I might just put a little bit more yellow in there actually. Okay, so that's given that a nice, a nice coloration. That's pigments. It's looking a bit sad over this side now. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow over here. I would say to you that um, I've used this yellow. I've used all the colours that I have used. I've used this yellow. Don't put it back into your box of pastels. Because when you come looking for it later on, you won't be able to tell which one it was. So the pastels that are in use, I generally leave in a little box so I can uh, grab them. I know which one it was and go just straight to it. There we are. I think that's all right. We've just got this top corner to do, which I'm going to do pretty much in turquoise. Yeah, it's a bit of a learning curve to be honest, it really is. Um, you can just end up with mud if you're not careful or a pile of dust. It's um it, it, it is a learning curve, you're quite right. But one that I think is worth doing. I really do. Just going to add a little bit of yellow into there. I would say that if you don't use paper or pastel mat specifically for pastels, yeah, you'll never get anywhere. No, it won't. It it, it won't sit on it. It'll just keep coming off. It won't blend. It won't stay in one place. It no, just, it just won't work. I mean, this now you've seen the amount of pigment I've put on. But there's nothing coming off it anymore. It's all sunk down into the um, into the tooth of the paper. If you if you didn't have if you just were using copier paper or even um, watercolor paper, it doesn't. It's got nothing to stick onto, so it's just moving around, doing nothing. So Susan says piles of dust, but that may be because of the wrong paper, perhaps. It might be, or just that you're putting too much pigment on. It doesn't take much pigment at all. No. Um, and some of these more expensive ones, really, it, you're just kissing the paper and you end up with loads of pigment. You know, I think the best thing to start with is a blended sky. Get your darkest blue and your lightest blue, or, or a white, if you haven't got that many blues in between, and put some dark blue on the top mid, lighter and then white or whatever you've got and blend them and see how much how much pigment you've got to add before you can blend them properly. Um, because with paper that's got quite a good tooth, it's, it's quite a lot. 
with paper that's got no tooth, like the velours, etc. You don't need very much at all, and you know, then you've got too much. So the thing is, you're right by saying too much. Too much pastel, yeah. yeah. Unless it goes a long way. Well, it's so easy, isn't it? You pick it up and, and you rub it and you rub it, and you think, oh, it's still not covered, and you rub it some more. But you've got to put a bit on, blend it, go back to it, add some more if it needs it. Um, you'll get used to it, and I really hope you do because I, I, I think it's a wonderful medium, I really do. Right, so let's, uh, well, I'm going to leave that till the end because I'm going to do that with pastel pencils. Um, but let's make a start on this, the underskirt of it, which is a purple. Right, I don't really have a purple. I mean, I have purples, but I don't have that darker uh, one. So what I'm going to have to do is layer. I'm going to have to layer my colours. And I'm going in with a black which is quite a rare occurrence, um, but I need a dark colour in there. So I'm going in with black, which won't be our final colour. Definitely not. And same on, on the other side here. Just darken down that shadow section inside the fuchsia. Again, don't put too much pigment on. We need to come over with another colour. And there's also a shadow section down here, which seeing as I've got the black in my hand, I'm just going to put in. This comes down like that. Now you'll get the hang of using soft pencils like this, using the little the sharp bits. But if you really, really can't and you've tried and it's not working, use your pastel pencils. Don't get in a fadangle about it. Just use your pastel pencils. So the sort of best purple that I've got for this is this, is this colour. And it's, it's not a perfect purple for it, but it's the best I can come up with. So we'll go over that, um, go over the, the black. It should give us a nice bit of shading. And we blend it. And here too. But I would definitely, if you possibly can, try the Mungio I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it, but I can't think of how else it could be. Um, pastels. And just, you know, just try. See if you enjoy it. It is a different experience, completely different, much more hands-on, I would say. Let me get dust up my nose because I'm going to sneeze. You know. Um, there is... Ill line here that I've missed out and it comes around like that I think and that's also purple dark 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 purple this one so this section here is just it's just really dark I'm not going to leave it black obviously but it is very dark let's go back in with this one Okay, so I'm blowing off the excess dust and I'm going in with this little tool that I showed you last time, which is the end of a of a pen. It's a um, stylus pen. Just to blend these in, blend them back. And I can see straight away that I haven't got enough black in that area to make this as dark as I want. So let's just add a little bit more to that. Being very gentle. See what that, what that looks like. Yeah, I'm getting better there. And then just blend it out into your 
slightly lighter colour for what you've got. There we are. So before I blend that, I'll just add a little bit of black because I know it needs it from the one we've just done. And down here too, this darkest of bits. So blend that out. Um, it's quite nice actually using something that you know if you get on your clothes is actually going to come off as opposed to uh, acrylic. I couldn't tell you how many pieces of clothing I've ruined with acrylics. So that's our darks put in. They're probably not as dark. Um, you don't get me a piece of kitchen towel, could you please? Um, probably not as dark as I would have liked, and they're not the purple I would have liked either. But I don't have those colours, so I'm using what I've got. Thank you. Excuse me. Having problems in the old nasal department. Right, so looking back at our reference, these two parts of the flower that come over the top, actually that's our acrylic, well I'll go off that, the acrylic, they're a much lighter pink, and but there are sections of purple in them. So let's just put the purple in as we see it, which is down in here, um, like that. And this one, it's got some purple around the edge. And down here where it comes out of that black shadow. And there are other little bits of purple around on it. And then the rest of it is quite a bright pink, um, which I haven't used yet. So I'll try. Um, I'll try. I'll go for this one. It's a Rembrandt. Go over all that purple that we've just put down. Not too much. I'm not overly familiar with the Rembrandts, to be honest with you. I tend to always go for the Unisons. But I've got these, and they are in. They have a better colour selection for this fuchsia, so we're using them. Seems a long time ago, doesn't it, that we were doing the fuchsia in acrylics. Some of you have just come on in leaps and bounds. It's it's amazing. So let's let's um, blend that in and see where we're up to. See see what we need. That wasn't really clever because I still had the dark colour on my stylus. I'm going to need some more light pink. Doesn't want to blend out yet. It's good now because we've pushed that back down so we can lay some more on top of it. And this one too. So really, all in all, there's very little pigment in that whole piece. Although we've, you know, given it a few, a couple of layers, there's still not very much pigment there because we're gently adding it because we don't want to fill up the tooth. 
to start with. You see how you can drag that shadow out of there. That's a peculiarity of, of pastels, which is lovely. Just get it with your blender and pull it across. And it's lovely. It, it gives a very nice uh, effect. Now I just want to, if I have got a brighter pink, this one might be slightly brighter. Just want to add a tiny little bit to the top there. And to the top of here too, I think. That just does happen with pastels, guys. It just does. There's no way around it. So wiping off the dark colour or darker or different colour that we had on that. Just go back into here and blend out this nice, very light pink. And that's just kind of finished with that, I think. They look quite nice, those petals there. And then we're into the much brighter pink, which is almost a red, to be honest. Um, but let's see what we've got here. This is my choice. I don't know what's missing from there, but it looks like something good. <laughs> um, I think that might be a quite a good colour and that. So let's see where we get to with these. I think, I think we're not far off with that, probably. So um, actually there's some white to go on first, and I'm just going to use my pastel pencil. Just the highlights of of these, the tips of these are in white and I'm just using my pastel pencil just to put those in. I have to come in later with a soft pencil. You get much brighter marks with a soft pencil than you do with a pastel pencil. Um, just for now, let's put these in with a pastel pencil. Let's see how easily they go in. This, on my acrylic, I've brought this right the way down to the bottom, so I'm going to do the same thing. And then here is a section of quite bright where it's catching the light. So let's go in with the lighter. I'm just going to take this wrapper off because it's going to annoy me otherwise. Actually, while that's being done, let's put the stamen things, whatever they are, the dangly bits down here in. And they are uh, a bright pink. Let's see if that goes first. Yes, please. That's pretty. Thank you. That's a good pink. And there's pink at the bottom here as well. Susan says she was very impressed by your rag doll. Oh, thank you. I love doing that rag doll. I really, really love doing it. And it's gone to a really nice home, so I'm very happy. I thought it might sell quite quickly, and it uh, certainly did. Which is nice, it's always nice when you work cells quickly. You think you're doing something right at least. So that's a lot of the pink in and going back to the white pastel pencil now and putting the bits that are showing up in the uh, in the light. white and I'm just going to use a different stylus that's clean and just mix those together blend them like that doing all right back to the white pastel pencil just go 
put in some highlights that the sun might have caught. I'm just going to go in with um, black pastel pencil that ideally you want as sharp as you can get, this one's not too bad, and just put, put some lines on the other side to the white just to darken it. Now with acrylic this would be very awkward. You need a minuscule brush and it would drive you dotty. So, so far, one up for the pastels. Right, that's them. I'm quite pleased with them. Now, to make sure, I don't want to blend those. So, if I blend them, I'm going to mix all the pigments together and it won't look like pink, white and black. It'll just look a bit of a mess. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my glassine paper over the area that I want padded down into the paper and just push it very firmly. You know, if you've got something like this that you want to just push it down with that's fine your fingers usually absolutely more than enough push it down into the pastel mat and then it, it won't move so we're um yeah look at that's fine i'm just going to wipe my hands because they're getting a bit dirty it does pay you to always have a damp cloth near you and always have a, a dry cloth too one of each um but it's amazing how grimy you get. I'm just going to clean the end of my stylus so it's not transferring colours around the place. Right, um, yeah that reminds me, these little things here which we're all familiar with, they're um, eye makeup brushes, uh, sponges that we put. <laughs> Alright, this doesn't want to come out. Yeah, there we are. And you buy them in packs of however many, 20 or whatever, and you get them from the pound shop, so they're not expensive. But they're quite good for blending uh, smaller regions that you can't get into with anything else. They're not ideal for it. They do tend to lift off some of the pastel, and you can get proper tools that are blending tools, but, you know, I mean, we're spending way too much money here, so... Um, while I've got my pastel pencils out, I'm just going to do this stem at the top. Um, and then I think we're pretty much finished with the pencils. So it's 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 kind of all sorts of colours, this. Uh, I'm, ad I'm adding a pink to it, because I think it has a sort of pink, pinky hue. You could do this with yourself, pastels, you really could, but I'm kind of... I'm not cheating, the pastel's just the same, but um, let's make it quicker. Actually, when you get the hang of applying pastels, you can do pastels really quickly. But that's not the aim, <laughs> to use up your money as quickly as you can. Oops, so I've got some gold around. There's my white. It comes around like that. Now the idea is to enjoy using them as you would enjoy using any um, medium. I find pastels more direct, I must say. Um, and kind of easier to handle. You seem to be more, more in charge of what's going on. Kind of go over this with this light brown. You can spend more time if you wish, and then I'm just going to go over it a little bit with white, just give it a bit of interest. Bit of light and a bit of shadow never, never hurt. So there we are. There's our, our stem put in. 
And once again, we just put the glassine over it and push it all back so it's safe, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's not an earthquake. Right, so the only thing we've got left to do now is uh, the big, the big pretty petals. Right, so I was going to use this bright pink that Mr. Fixit's now taken the, and I think you would describe that as fuchsia pink. Would you not? That's fuchsia pink. Excellent. Where's my glossy? So I'm going up just over the white line that we put in with the pastel pencils so I can blend it properly. I don't know what's going on with my nose today. It's, I want to sneeze and it's itchy. And if I was American, I'd say I was having um, allergies. I'm having allergies. But I don't think I am. <laughs> so I'm just laying this down. Um, as I say, these are Rembrandts and I'm not totally used to them. So I'm taking it gently. Right, so that's the top one, but it needs some it needs some shading in there. So I'm actually going to use this uh, purple and see how we get. So if I'm following, no, that's not dark enough. What about this one? It looks nice and dark. I'm just going to put some in up this side. Now there. That probably needs just a little bit more in there. And put it over the dark that you've just put in so we get a nice blend. Let's just blend that in and see. See if it's enough or not. Go over your white edges. Try and pull some of that white just into it if you can. Let's see if we've got enough here. No, I think we need a little, a little more. I'm just going to snap this in half. Because I just need the broad side to go down here. Actually, put some pigment on the page. So I don't think there's any other bit um, that's got any shading on. It's just really this side here. And pull that over into the lighter side there. So I'll just go over and flatten it down. That's pretty. Looks like a fuchsia pink. So we'll do this one. Um, I keep forgetting which colour it is. It's this one, isn't it? The one I broke. So because I've now broken it, I can get some reasonable levels of pigment laid down because I can use it on its side. To be honest, if you ever see anybody's uh, pastel set and they aren't broken, they ain't been pasteling. That's all I'd say. I mean, different people use pastels for different things, of course. I just need to bring it up to a point here now. And then I need to add my darker section, which is coming down here. Like that, a bit of shading, a bit of shadow. The leaves sort of curled that way, the petal, should I say. Get rid of your excess. You shouldn't really blow it, you should tap your, um, your card. Just need a little bit more pigment down here. Now I'm blending all of these, and that's one way to do it. That's the way I've chosen to do this uh, fuchsia. 
But when I've finished, I'll come back in and I'll put some marks on it that I'm not going to blend. And you'll see just how vibrant that can be. I took a bit of getting that word there, vibrant. I'll put some more gestural marks on um, and you'll just see that it they really can be wonderful and work in many ways. If you you know if you invest in some paper, puzzle paper and some um, of the mungio, the other pe um, pastels that I could really absolutely recommend really are the Faber Castell I think they're called soft pastels. They're, they're, um, I don't even know where they are. They're in a, are they in, are they in that box? They must be. The little cubes, sort of half stick cubes, and they are fantastic. I'm just picking. Yeah, they're relatively inexpensive as well. Yeah, they are. That's what I was thinking, and yet you get loads of colours. Okay, so you know we're kind of finished, really. That's that's kind of it. Yeah. Let me just show you these before we uh, disappear. Faber Castell. I have yet to come across anything that Faber Castell have made that I do not absolutely adore. Um. I'm a real Faber Castell girl. I've got the Pit Pastels. I've got the Polychromos colours. Um, I just, I love it. They are the golden of um, the pencil world, I would say. So this, it says 72 soft pastels. I think since I bought this, they have changed the packaging. Still pretty much the same, but this picture on the front's a bit different. But Faber Castell, 72 soft pastels. And these are the, I've got some out because I'm working on a, on a piece uh, somewhere else. But that's pretty much the whole of the 72 that you get there. I have had these donkeys, I really have. And you'll see that some of them I still haven't even used, to be honest. Um, I should have got these out with some nice fuchsia pinks in here. Because the cube, you get some really good... Um, lines with them and it's not it's not as difficult as the big chunky chalk pastels you can they're very very controllable but because they're half sticks you can draw as i was showing you with a broadside um really easily these are they're wonderful i love them i really do i love them more than my unisons i'm not saying something how much are they they are up to Cassart. So they're Cassart, uh, that's what they look like now evidently, and the 1895. I don't know if there's postage to pay on that. Probably. Probably. Um, they seem to be on a sale at the moment, but not that much of a sale. But they're really worth considering. You get so many colours and they're just lovely pastels to use. Can't Can't recommend them highly enough. Really can't. The Mungio, they might be great, but I haven't used them, so I can't give you that qualification. These ones, however, mm, lovely. Right, so as I promised, we've come to the end, so I'm just going to put some kind of gestural marks onto here, something to make it, you know, ours as opposed to any old copy. So let's just put some, some shadow into that top bit there. And not blend it. Um, it's down this side, isn't it? No shadow. In here. So you can see it makes quite a difference already. So if we get the uh, get quite a light pink, was this the pink we were using? Yeah. So I need a different pink to that. Um, how about go balmy and try a really light pink? Just so we can see what we're doing. Oh, I see these Rembrandts don't want to leave. Uh, 
Now that's much more obvious when you see it in real life. It looks really, uh, really nice actually. I can't remember what I've been using for what. Um, and this, we could put a nice, really bright pink mark down there. Really bring it to life. And down this side. And, and don't blend them. Once you blend them, you've lost all that all that marking. And that's another way to, to go about with your pastels, you know, when you've finished. And it's a really lovely way, I think. I really, I really like that. You know, if you're doing a whole painting like that, it's just beautiful. Um, but once you blend it, you lose all that. And if you're doing, so, for example, a dog or a cat, which I do lots of, and you put all the fur on and it's loads of tiny marks and whatever and then you blend it you've lost them all they've all gone so you've got nothing just a muddy mess so sometimes it's really nice just to put these really big strong gestural marks on it and it ends up looking like that which i don't know if the camera's actually doing justice to because it's really pretty if you don't like it Blend them out or blend part of them out. But then sometimes when you've blended it all out, it can just look a little bit dull and uninteresting. So you've got to dare to leave some of these marks in. But there you are. I'm just showing you what it looks like when it's blended out. So you can blend the light into the dark here, or I could blend the dark into the light. Blending the light into the dark as it happens. And same here. So it's your choice. You can leave it with these lovely marks in, which I actually prefer. They look more, it looks more painterly. It doesn't look as dull. It brings real life to your picture. Um, or you can do as I'm doing now. Just get rid of all those lovely marks. Leave it like that and it's up to you. A couple of different ways to deal with pastels. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to have a go. Um, if I had more time, I'd tidy this up, obviously. Yeah, random bloody would like to know do you use a kind of spray over it when you've finished? Good question. Um, I use Windsor & Newton Professional Fixative when I have to. Only really when it's critical pastel mat is a good it's what it's a an excellent board to use with pastels and unless you absolutely saturate the blessed thing so the pastel is falling off um you won't lose you know it won't come off so give it a good tap and you should be all right if you really feel that you do need fixative then use a fixative. Use I use Windsor & Newton Professional Fixative. It's quite expensive. There are other ones around that you can use. I know some people use hairspray. It makes me cringe, actually, that you'd do a piece of pastel that you care for and that you'd spray it with hairspray. Um, but, you know... Um, some people swear by it. The other thing, as I said at the beginning, Rhonda, was that if you've run out of tooth on your paper, if you're putting pastel down and nothing's sticking, it's just a load of dust, tap it all off, spray it with this fixative, and it'll give you some more tooth to work on too. So that's uh, another reason to have some fixative. But the pastel matte paper, you shouldn't need to use a fixative really. Yes. Yes, that's a good point. Um, if you if you're mounting it properly, framing it properly, you definitely won't need a fixative. This was just that little apple blossom thing that I did uh, through the week. It's nothing special at all, um, but it it does show you a perfect way of, of framing your things. The glass is on the top here, and underneath it this black piece here goes down so the pastel piece is about three-eighths of an inch
below the glass. So it's not touching it. Never never mount your pieces where the pastel is touching the glass. Um, it, it'll it stick. It'll Static will do that. It'll stick to it and your pastel will come off. Your glass will get filthy and the whole thing will be a disappointment. Um, so either use double mat uh, mount or something like this. Uh, this one's perfect. That takes the glass away from the pastel. Yeah, this this is a single mount. It's not it's not ideal. It's just a narrow little single mount uh, under the glass, but it does keep the the um, picture away from the glass, which is what you're aiming for. So sometimes um, places like the range and whatever Dunelm have double mounted mats. Sometimes you've just got to go and, and buy one from a picture framer, but if it's your piece and you've spent a lot of time on it and you're proud of it, then it's it's worth that. You're worth it. Right, so it's a bit of a quick jig around pastels. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've taught you something. I hope I've taught you that you can actually blend pastels in lots of different ways. They're easy to blend, much more easy than acrylics, much, much more easy. And if you get some, just try three colours horizontally and blend them together on some proper pastel card. And, um, and you'll be off. You'll be off. There'll be no stopping you. So thanks very much for joining me on this Saturday afternoon. It's now, I think, officially Saturday tea time. So I'll be off to see what's for my tea. <laughs> and I'll be with you next Saturday at four o'clock. Can't thank you enough for joining me. You feel a bit daft if you sit near talking to yourself, to be quite honest. Thank you all. Bye.